Okay, and then the final question is all about linear programming. So let's have a look at this. There are two different types of storage container available, standard and deluxe. Standard containers cost £20, and deluxe containers cost £65. Let X be the number of standard containers and Y be the number of deluxe containers. The maximum budget available is 520. So write down an inequality. So it's going to be £20 for every value of X, and if you add to that 65 for the uh, number of Ys that you got, that can't exceed the maximum budget, so it's going to need to be less than or equal to 520. So that's your first mark. And then what we've got to do for four marks now, add lines and shading to diagram one in the answer book to represent all four constraints. So let's start with this 20x plus 65y is less than 520. So what you could do is for this one, you could have x equals 0. And then 520 divided by 65 is 8. So you could have y equals 8. So 0, 8 is that one there. Or you could have y equals 0, and then 520 divided by 20 gives us 26. So x equals 26. So 26, which is there, 0. And then what you do is you join those up with a nice little look at that. Ruler isn't working, or pen isn't working with this ruler. <laughs> Right, let's give this another go. Let's find a better ruler. So we had 26, 0, and we had 0, 8. So let's see if this one works. Aha! What do we do here? Let's go freestyle. There you go. Now we've got x, is, so we want it to be less than 520, so we want to get rid of all the big values. Then we've got x has got to be greater than 2, so we draw in the line x equals 2, which looks like that. And because it's got to be greater than, we're going to get rid of these ones here. Right, this one's a little bit tricky. In fact, let's, let's not do that so we can actually see the axes. Now, x plus 24y equals 24. That one's a little bit trickier. So, let's say that x, in fact, let's start with our y values. So let's say y equals one, therefore 24 lots of one is going to be 24, so x is going to need to be zero. So zero, one is going to be our first point. Then if we have y equals two, so that's going to be 24 lots of two, which is 48, take away x equals 24, so therefore x is going to need to be 24. So we've got 24 across and then two up, which is this point here. So if we try drawing that line in, oh, that one's working now. Right, let's try this one again. Let's try this one. Okay. And we want it to be greater than 24, so we want to get rid of all the small values. Let's get rid of the ones underneath. So that's the first one, the second one, that one. Then 7x plus 8y equals 112. So with that one, we can let x equal 0. So then that means 8 lots of y is 112. So 112 divided by 8 is 14. So y equals 14. So 0, 14 would be this point here. Or we can let y equal 0. So that means eight, sorry, 7 lots of x is 112. So 112 divided by 7 is 16. So we got that one there. So again, let's try and join this up. Okay, now we want it to be less than 112. So we want to get rid of all the big values. Let's get rid of that there, leaving us with our feasible region R. And let's say that's all we've got time for in this question. That's still five marks. Okay, now, th again, the next bit I don't think was that easy. So the capacity of a deluxe container is 50% greater than the capacity of a standard container. We wish to maximize the capacity. So what I would then say, the capacity is whatever the values of x is, plus, because it's 50% greater, that means 1.5 lots of y. 
So let's say the can. Um, yeah, so whatever the x is, the 1.5, so the y is going to be 1.5 lots bigger. So that's an extra 50%. So use the objective line, a method to find an optimal vertex V of the feasible region. You must make your objective line clear and label your optimal vertex V. So let's say I want my capacity to be 30. What I could do is I could have um, x equaling 30. I could have y equal, in fact, let's make it 15, just so it's a nicer number. So let's say I want my capacity to be 15. I could either have my x as 15 and my y as 0, or I could have my x as 0 and my y as 10. So therefore, if I put those two in, 15, so 14, 15 is going to be there, and, and 0, 10 is going to be that one there. So my objective line is going to look like that. And what I want to do is I want to maximize, maximize my objective line. So I'm going to need to push it in this direction until I get to my final vertex. So if I do that, I get to this point here, which I'm going to call V. And that's those three marks. So calculate the exact vertex V. So what I do is I've got to solve where this line here meets this line here. So if we write down the two equations of those lines, um, we had 20x plus 65y equal, equals 520. Let's write that a little bit neater. No, not the neatest of writers, that's awful. 20x plus 65y equals 520. Then we had this one here, which was um, 7x plus 8y equals 112. And then we've got to solve those simultaneously. So what I'd probably do is I can see that all the top one ends in 5. So let's rewrite that by dividing by 5. That's going to be 4x plus 13y equals, if we divide 520 by 5, is 104. Okay, so let's make the x's the same. So, that's going to be 28, if we multiply them by 4. So 28x plus 32y equals 448. So times the bottom by 7. So we've got 28x plus um, 81y equals 7 lots of 104 is 728. They subtract them, so that's going to be 49y equals 728 take away 448 280 divide it by 49 and we get 280 over 49 so y equals 280 over 49 which if you simplify that down is 5 and 5 sevenths so then if we substitute that into one of our other equations, so let's substitute it into our small one down here. So times that by 8. Take away from 112. And then divide by 7. And get x is 9 and 23 over 49. So the exact coordinates are 9 and 23 over 49 and 5 and 5 sevenths. Again, willing to be corrected if anyone spots a mistake that I've made. Um, okay, determine the number of each. Because what we've done there is we've worked out the coordinates of this vertex here. But clearly we can't have 9.5 um, 
which whatever that is, containers and five point seven containers, we've got to have exact number of containers. So part F, determine the number of each type of container. So we've got to find something as we pushed our ruler up this direction. Um, we could have had that point there, or we could have maybe had this point here, we could have this point here. So what we're going to do is we're going to test out um, points and see whether or not um, we've got the correct one. So for instance, we could have 9, 5, or we could have 10, 5, we could have 10, 6, we could have 9, 6. So we're going to try all the coordinates just slightly above and below this one here. So just try and give myself some room to work. First of all, we're going to see whether or not they obey to the constraints. So they all can obey to that one. So let's do 20 lots of this one and 65 lots of... In fact, this one will definitely be in there. And because that was, so uh, let's say our vertex was there, so that was actually in the feasible region. Let's try 10, 5. So 20 lots of 10 plus 65 lots of 5. 20 lots of 10 plus 65 lots of 5 is 525. So that one we can't have because that's 525. So we do, so if 10, 5. Also in there, 10, 6 certainly won't be in there. So let's try 9, 6. So 20 lots of 9 plus 65 lots of 6. And we get 570. So 9, 6 can't be in there either. So it's going to have to be 9, 5. So it needs to buy 9 standard and 5 deluxe. Make it clear and calculate the cost for purchasing the storage container. So now, if that's true, we then need to work the cost of that out. So we need to do 9 times by 20 and then plus 5 times by 65. So 9 times 20 plus 5 times 65 is 505. So the cost is going to be 505 pounds. And I believe that was the final question. Um, thank you very much if you did go through and watch all of them. Um, please subscribe to our School of Math as a Facebook page and good luck with everything that you do next year in terms of C3, C4 and stuff.